What's going on guys? HP from HP Speed here and today we're going to be working on my 1997 Toyota 4Runner. Now, 316,000 miles later, this car is running strong. However, there is some stuff that needs to be done and today I'm going to be replacing my ignition coils, my ignition wires, as well as the right side bank boots as well. So, I've got all my parts here. I've got three coils because this vehicle does not have coil on plug on this side. Instead, they actually have coil wires that will come to the top of these coil packs. They will plug in separately for each other side as well. So pretty simple to go ahead and do. Let me go ahead and walk you through it. Hope you guys enjoy. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disattach any vacuum line that's connected to our throttle body intake piping because I want to make sure that when I remove the intake piping, I can just come off in one sweet motion. So first ones are going to be right here off these muffler boxes. Got to be careful with these lines. They are a little cracked and old. You don't want to rip them. One down here is actually that separated. One up top here, and that's it. Now let's go ahead and disattach our intake tube without having to remove our mass airflow sensor right here. These are going to be 10 millimeter uh, sockets. I'm using deep ones so I can have enough room to get top and bottom. Just want to get them loose. All right, go ahead and set that aside. Now we can access our coils on the driver's side. They are held with 10 millimeter nuts as well. I'm going to go ahead and unplug all these connectors first and make sure that I leave them kind of in the same orientation of where they were so I don't lose them. Now that I have undone our connectors for each coil pack, I'm going to loosen all these 10 millimeter bolts. And before I remove them, I'll also remove these terminals and these plug wires. I'm gonna replace the coil packs first so I can make sure I'm going at a good pace. I don't lose track of which wires go to which. one of them I'm gonna go ahead and look at this plug it does look like I can actually probably do this with just my hand if I lift this upwards might actually have to get a small screwdriver can probably do it with my nails I'm gonna go ahead and get a screwdriver just in case with a flat head I'm gonna go ahead and try to work this up and work this entire thing back as well Now that I've got that taken out, I can see it's a little old, but looks like in fairly good condition. I'm getting some random misfires occasionally, so I'm going to go ahead and replace these as preventative. These are labeled Denso brand because that's what Toyota uses, and that's what I'm going to replace them with. Let's go ahead and get started on the first one. With the fresh one out, I'm going to go ahead and place that in, just like so. And make sure that it's firmly seated before I start threading my bolt. Now that it's seated, I'm going to go ahead and connect. That way I have one less connector to deal with. So now that I have one coil pack done, I'm going to go ahead and remove that one plug wire and follow it all the way to the other side. That way I don't lose my placement on how it gets routed on the plug wire separators. Now we're going to come over to this side, we're going to work out this plug, just by going upwards, and pull that right out of its sleeve. Now we're going to reverse the process with the new plug. Now the plugs are different lengths, I have my new ones already laid out to make sure that I grab the one that has the correct length. Looks like this is going to be that first one here. Routing the new one, we're going to make sure that when we put it in, it is properly seated all the way.
Now that it's firmly seated, we'll continue with the rest. So as we can see, I'm securing on the coils and I'm taking my time when I'm pulling this wire out to make sure that when I'm routing it out, I know how to route it back in. Now that I've got the new plug wire in, installing that plug, the coil boot going down, and I'm slowly routing the wire, making sure that every single separator I'm making sure it goes into. Now when plugging this one in, I realized how easy that went into, and then I realized my first coil terminal actually wasn't secured properly and that casing kind of got in the way. So I readjusted the casing, moving on back to the third one, and then getting the third coil in there as well. Now, uh, I'm always, when I'm securing the coil on there, I'm plugging in the connector so I don't miss any steps. And that way, whenever I go to put the coil wire back on, that's the last thing I have to do. And then putting the last coil wire back on, rerouting it slowly through all the vacuum tubes and housings, and making sure that it goes through all the separators. Now off camera, I did actually end up doing a quick temporary repair to that intake tube as it was kind of dry rotted, which is why it was done off camera. Now that you've gone and put everything back, make sure all of your piping was back in place, as well as your coils pressed firmly and flush all the way around. Now we get to test start it and make sure everything works right. Starts up great. The greatest benefit of doing this is going to make sure that you maximize your fuel efficiency. These third gen 4Runners don't get great gas mileage as it is, but if you can squeeze out another one to two miles a gallon, definitely helps in the long run. Make sure your vehicle is running nice and efficient. Thanks for joining us today again, guys. This has been HP from HP Speed. Be sure to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell to stay tuned for much more.